we have made government services more readily available to more people than ever before. This week, Nations Business takes a look at the role of one of the busiest ministries in the land. The Office of the Prime Minister. The Office of the Prime Minister occupies a crucial position within government and works with its strategic partners such as ministries and key stakeholders in ensuring that ordinary citizens are provided access to life's basic necessities such as health, education, proper roads, electricity, water and internet services to the remotest parts of Fiji. What we bring to the table now is a holistic process from the planning right down to the evaluation of all of our works. Eh? There are six divisions that make up the office of the Prime Minister and these are Cabinet Office, Private Office, Policy Advisory Unit, Development Corporation, Poverty Monitoring Unit and the Strategic Framework for Change and Coordinating Office. These divisions cover a wide range of issues and provide administrative support to the Prime Minister and members of Cabinet. The role of the Office of the Prime Minister is first and foremost to provide support of the plan that he has set upon himself to run the government. Leading these divisions, in addition to being Minister for Finance, Strategic Planning, Public Service, People's Charter for Change, Peace and Progress, Information, Itauke Affairs, Sugar Industry and Lands and Mineral Resources, is Prime Minister Orenge Bainimarama. The Office of the Prime Minister works tirelessly towards building a stronger and better Fiji for all, a role that has set a new course towards a brighter future for all Fijians. His work has always been to try and make sure that the basic necessities of life is granted to every Fijian and in all of the utilities that are provided by government. As Prime Minister, Orenge Mbaini Marama visits all sections of communities and makes time for all Fijians, ensuring that the voices of the people are heard and that development programs and government services benefit people at the grassroots. It's quite clear uh, that uh, the Prime Minister's leadership is uh, strong, is visionary and uh, an inclusive type of uh, leadership which simply means that everybody, regardless of race, regardless of ethnic groups, regardless of your location or your geographical uh, location, we are all under one. Reforms have been the driving factor of government and is crucial in enhancing public sector efficiency. In 2012, the cost of public service was reduced by 20% as a result of reforms implemented by government. He wants the public service to be able to structure itself to respond well to the needs of the people. We have structured ourselves here in the office of the Prime Minister. We have a structure that is able to respond to his open door policy. We even have, as you know, an office here that is dedicated to that. And there is uh, a text, you know, people can send him a text message, you know, anytime. People call him on his cell phone and there is issue with him directly. All our numbers are, you know, in the public directory. So he takes his talk to the people. Eh? Over the past few years, there has been marked improvement in the delivery of public service to Fijians. This continuous pursuit of excellence has resulted in the implementation of the Service Excellence Framework. The SCA in itself is a very, very important process. It is a, a means to an end. Generally, it helps to create effectiveness and efficiency in the way that services is delivered by the public service. The public service is the hands and the feet of government. Eh? Government's policies can only be translated well through the public service.
Nations Business travelled with the Prime Minister around the country to find out how government projects are bringing about meaningful change to all Fijians. This is in line with government's open-door policy by attending to all priority areas. In developing a common national identity and building social cohesion around the country, Fiji now has adopted a common name for all Fijians. The reduction of poverty is one of the key focus areas of the Prime Minister's office that has led to the successful reduction from 35% to 15%. In the areas of essential services, state-organized roadshows around the country has led to a greater awareness among the people. No, we are very happy with this. We are also very happy with the problems of the water. We are also very happy with the water. We are very happy with the water. But we are also very happy with the water. We are also very happy with the water. We are also very happy. Kena kena bila kasam kisah resalvat kah? Entar orang ni betul nakin. Orang ni tu kunci santun isu sulit. Entar tu menda na tur bakal mutu. Oh si bukan entar itu ki. Entar tu rida bakal mama tu tu kena buli. Sabe tu kena tuwi kentar tu dia lulu ni maten. Isa kan bimbing dia. This government is helping us farmers and also our school children. They have been given the school fare. To school and also for the fish, I'm very grateful to this government. They are doing marvelous job. The Prime Minister's office continues to provide marketing assistance to established rural farmers by assisting them through funding under the Ministry of Agriculture's Rural and Outer Island Program. In reaching out to communities, the PM's office, through its Community Development Small Grant Scheme, has assisted a wide cross-section of communities around the country. There is a high degree of genuineness, you know, of, of care, of love that, that he exerts with his work. Uh, and he places a very strong emphasis on that. Eh? Well, all of us have seen uh, that uh, there is development all around Fiji. And I believe there are two key factors here uh, which allows uh, this development to take place or for us to move forward. Number one uh, is it's been inclusive, as I've mentioned. There's no discrimination whatsoever. Everybody is treated as one. These programs, in addition to major projects such as the opening of new roads and jetties, the creation of new health centers and extension of hospitals, the upgrading of water infrastructure, making education free for all and free transportation for school students and subsidized fares for the elderly are all part of improving the standard of living in Fiji. Yeah, हमने देखी थी कि जो उन जो आज बोले बिहान कर दे ये काम तो इसके लिए ये सरकार बहुत अच्छा सरकार है क्योंकि मम्मी मरो तक सर वाले हुए कि मम्मी कान के मम्मी कलों में तो वाले बुना नाम बोल लती को ना ना गोनी के मेरे तक तो इन्होंने बुरे बुरे भी बात लोग तो किले वो सही को ना वाले मरो कि नाम बोल मम्मी म पहले हम लोग बहुत गरीब रहे इधर सर्वांग आप बहुत गरीब रहा ना अभी अच्छा हुई के गवर्नमेंट मदद करे स्कूल लड़कन के भी अच्छा है किरिया हुई के चले ना और तासील फिर होए ना सोला लग गए गवर्नमेंट मदद करे इतना अच्छा है ना हेल्थ सेंटर के लिए भी अब अच्छा हुई के सब चीज तासील रास्ता होए नगी और इंजन भी दिया हम लोग को पानी के लिए जब वो भी हो गया फिर हम लोग को प्राइम मिनिस्टर के पास एक लेटा लिखा कि हमारे जो इलाका है लगभग 500-600 आदमी बीच में पानी का बहुत मुसीबत है तब सरकार ने तंगनीकुला से भी पानी का व्यवस्था भी शुरू कर दिया है शायद एक दो महीना में या पानी भी मीटर सिस्टम लग जाएगा इन रीशेपिंग फीजी गवर्नमेंट इज अडॉप्टिंग प्रोग्रेसिव मेजर्स दैट प्रमोट्स इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी अमंग मेन एंड वुमेन इन द सिविल सर्विस
Fiji has seen immense transformation in all sectors under the Prime Minister's office. From the welcoming of Fiji's first new fleet of planes, the opening of ANZ Stadium which allows Fiji to host international and national sporting events, to encouraging taxi business owners in providing efficient services for all Fijians. In the international arena, never before has Fiji's diplomatic relations soared, with a number of record bilateral and multilateral ties established with countries around the globe, all part of promoting Fiji's potential to the world. For the first time, Fiji has been at the forefront, chairing the group of G77 plus China, the International Sugar Council, as well as the ACP Sugar Trade Talks with the European Union. Regionally, Fiji has chaired the Melanesian Spearhead Group and has been the driving force behind the implementation of the MSG Trade Agreement as well as negotiations for an economic partnership agreement with the EU. Through the monitoring process undertaken by the Prime Minister's office, momentous progress and achievements have been recorded at national level in the development of our country for the past years and these will continue. These achievements have been felt in the three main sectors of government performance, good governance, economic development and socio-cultural sectors. In terms of economic and infrastructure development, the Prime Minister's office strong emphasis has been placed on the betterment of roads and bridges, both at the urban centre and rural areas to enable better access and mobility. You can see in the short time that uh, the FRA has been established, there's been a significant amount of work, sustainable work, eh, that has been done. People can see it. It's going to take time because the majority of our work every day at the Fiji Roads Authority is to deconflict priorities. The amount of neglect that has been there from ages ago, a lot of it is now we're only just trying to deal with it now in a, in a, in a much more sustainable manner. Eh? Roading infrastructure is, is the starting point for, for access and connectivity, so um, it's, not just, it's not just economic development, it's, it's social connectedness, um, it's uh, the starting point for getting those, you know, the, the school buses out, kids to school, um, and then as you say the, the economic side of it, so opening up, uh, whether it's opening up new areas for, for agriculture or, or other activity, or whether it's just enhancing access and um, making it much easier for people to, to get their, their goods out, out to markets, um, providing access that previously only a four-wheel drive could, could go up and now a bus can go up. Uh, those sorts of things have a, have a significant effect for, for um, individuals. This also involves the adequate resourcing of Fiji's revenue and resource-based sectors in our continuous efforts to enhance a strong and sustainable economy for our nation. The socio-cultural sector has witnessed new opportunities of social welfare, health and education benefits handed to qualified recipients. For the children to be given all the possible opportunities for them to learn, to learn, to learn and to learn properly, yeah? be it in the classrooms, be it in you know, the, the roads that take them from their homes to uh, their school, be it in school fees, be it in books. It's very exciting, not only for me personally, not for the school, but as the nation as whole. Well. I mean, if you look back to the history of this country, this is the first time such initiative has taken place and I should put my hats off and thank the government of the day in taking such initiatives, particularly to the students level, you know. Fees is such an important uh, aspect of, of running of a school and if that is looked after by our government, I mean, that's a blessing for the kids themselves. Engaging with our international regional development partners, civil society organizations, private sectors and our key stakeholders has been one of the key developments in strengthening partnership and enhancing our dialogue processes towards national development. Company.